I'm Russ Milheim from The Direct. Thank you for talking with me. Uh, I got to see Wish the other day, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so my first question for you guys is, what was the most unique challenge that Wish presented you guys? Well, right from the beginning, you know, there, there was a daunting challenge, and that was it had to evoke everything that we love about Disney animated movies for the past hundred years. Yeah. You know, so that w that was daunting, but it quickly turned from that into joy, because we're all Disney fans, and and the passion uh, to to tell the story. Everybody in the studio wanted to be a part of it. So um, that, but that was. From the beginning, that was the biggest challenge. How do you how do you embrace that and yet tell an original story with original songs and characters? The movie has a lot of Disney references and Nas, which is a really fun thing to see as it as it goes on. You guys have a lot to pull from. So, what maybe didn't make the cut or got really oh, close, uh, and you were like, ah, we just can't do it this time. Oh gosh. <laughs> From, from references? I mean, listen, there's a ton of things that don't make the cut because our movies are an ever-flowing story, you know, and we, like, test it many, many times. And the idea of a Disney movie that celebrates Disney anniversary of 100 years of, of storytelling is obviously going to lend itself to this being so many different options, but I think it became a no-brainer when we came to to the concept of wishing on a star and a star coming down, you know? But, it, you know, we discussed many, many other versions. I mean, the nods only made it into the film if it happened organically, yeah. if it made sense in the story we tell. If it was distracting, we knew we didn't want to do it. You know, the movie has star, the wishing star. There's kind of a meta element to it, and especially at the end, you kind of, you kind of hint at, like, oh, like... Maybe this is in other movies, or this kind of directly plays a role. Did you guys ever lean more into that in other versions of when you guys were brainstorming how this movie was going to unfold? Did you lean more into that meta-ness? I think it comes from an emotional place where we know that wishing and wishing on the star is such a Disney element that, yeah, of course, we know that the wishing star is there for Yepeto and for Tiana, and, uh, and it is kind of like a character that has always been a part of Disney, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's something that we don't shy away from. Like all things, you know, we have to find that right balance, and, yeah. and hopefully we found, found it. Now, the other day, former Walt Disney Studios chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg uh, claimed that he thinks that 90% of animators' jobs on uh, animated movies are going to be AI in the future. What do you guys think about that statement and kind of where AI will come into the animated process uh, in the future? Look, uh, we're taking a very uh, cautious approach. We, uh, we're we waiting to see how things develop. Uh, truthfully, uh, we, we like tools that let the artist enhance the work that they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't view it as, as um, uh, an end means in and of itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The movie has plenty of great songs. I really enjoyed the music. Um, but which of those songs do you think stood out as the most challenging to finally nail and get just what you wanted? I mean, I think I'll speak. I don't want to, I'll speak for Julia because she has said this many times. Mm -hmm. I'm a Star was an incredible difficult song for her to write because it happens in a moment where you need to convey this key information, but it also needs to be fun. But she also, I think, nailed uh, the idea of the scientific elements that we're all made of stars and we're connected that way because that's a real thing. Yeah. And at the same time, it's extremely poetic. And it's sung by many different voices, and then recording it was also very challenging. So I think it was it was a difficult song to nail down, mm -hmm. but uh, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. it's really, it, you know all all the songs I think landed uh, perfectly. Yeah, Alan Tudyk, Valentino uh, is great. Did you guys ever consider having him be a different animal or kind of companion, or was kind of that was the goat? That's what you guys were. I think we landed on on the goat ahead of time, Valentino ahead of time. Even the fact that Valentino would wear wear pajamas, uh, so we uh, we brought him in after the design. However, he's the one who really helped bring the personality alive. Uh, you know, he tried many different voices. Uh, the one we picked is the most surprising, but <laughs> somehow somehow works and fits, and it certainly made us laugh. Now, I want to pivot real quick and ask you, Peter, about, uh, I have to ask about Frozen 3. Okay. Um, now, it's one of the first films that you guys do that's a threequel, right? It's the third movie. So what is it like expanding the franchise into that unknown territory? Look, uh, we only tell, uh, we only do sequels if we believe there's enough story to tell. They're working on it up and develop. I'm focused on Wish, yeah. uh, but but it is exciting what they're working on. I, I will say anything that you read about out in the public, we haven't said anything about it, so it's all conjecture, but uh, uh, I trust that, that, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing. Now, jumping back to Wish, what is... 
with everyone seeing the movie, what is the one thing that you want people to remember the most over the next few years? Like, what, what do you want them to retain from this movie specifically? Mm. That, that, well, that wishes are attainable and that there is hope in the world, especially if we connect uh, together. Yeah. And I would say something that Chris Buck says all the time is that when you say your wish out loud, the world listens. And, uh, and then there's, uh, there's guidance like the star, like stars there to help and guide Asha. And in the real life, there's people like that surrounding us too, you know? Like it's up to us to determine our destiny, but there are helps uh, from the universe. Mm -hmm.